Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday morning's devotion. Our readings are for Isaiah 41, 1 to 16, Mark 1, 29 to 45, Psalm is 119, 1 to 24. The collect is for the first Sunday after Epiphany, the baptism of our Lord, on page 160.
our opening sentence is on page 33 for Epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered in my name, and a pure offering for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. We continue in prayer. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Divinity. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalm. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hand molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you will hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world of righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, let us bear our souls to the Lord, bring to him even those things of which our consciences are afraid. Lord, we pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm is number 119. Begin at verse 1 and on to 24. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I may keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfailing heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How shall a young man be cleansed his ways? By keeping to your word. With my whole heart 
I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your, of your mouth. I will take greater delight in the way of your decrees than in manners of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your words. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgment. You have rebuked the insolent. Curse are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from my shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes. For your decrees are my delight, and they are my counselors. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, beginning at verse 1 and on to 16. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Let the people renew their strength. Let them approach, then let them speak. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who has roused a victor from the east, summoned him to his service? He delivers up nations to him and tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword, like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them and passes on safely, scarcely touching the path with his feet. Who has performed and done this, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am first and will be the last. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and come. Each one helps the other, saying to one another, Take courage. The artisans encourages the goldsmith. And the one who smooths with the hammer encourages the one who strikes the anvil, saying to the soldering, saying of the soldering, it is good. And they fasten it with nails so that it cannot be moved. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friends, you whom I took from the end, ends of the earth and called from its Father's corner, saying to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right arm. Yes, all who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be, as, shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you insect Israel. I will help you, says the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. 
Now I will make of you a threshing sledge, sharp, new, and having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them off, and the tempest shall scatter them. Then you shall rejoice in the Lord, in the Holy One of Israel you shall glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus on page, <coughs> on page 40 of your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the word you sought our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Mark, in the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 1, beginning at verse 29, and on to 45. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured them who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in the synagogue, casting out demons. A leper came to him begging him, and kneeling he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into the town openly, but stayed out in the country, and the people came to him from every quarter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, it, I thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts with you 
on this morning's gospel reading. We observe in today's gospel reading that our Lord engaged in, a, in, the, in his great Galilean ministry. We should notice that there's a level of urgency as he proceeds. At the synagogue in Capernaum, Jesus had, he had taught with such authority that he astounded all those who listened. He further asserted his authority by cleansing a man of unclean spirit. And he commanded that spirit to be silent. This was a new authoritative teaching, much unlike that of the religious authority of the day. Leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew. He was accompanied by James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was laid up in bed with a fever and Jesus was informed of her condition immediately upon his arrival. The apostles and all those present knew that when Jesus comes, he comes to do good. We must feel just as strongly about invoking the presence of Jesus when we are in need of healing. Healing in, in whatever way. When we feel miserable or I should say where we fail and where we fall down miserably is our lack of faith and our impatience. We must remember that there's much to learn during periods of illness. If only we could look beyond the pain, if we, if we could look beyond the suffering, the discomfort, there's much to learn. One commenter, commentator on the subject contends that those who are kept from public ordinances by sickness or other real hindrances may expect the gracious presence of the Savior. End of quote. Matthew Henry. You see, Jesus, then Jesus took the sick by the hand and lifted her up. She was cured of a fever to the extent that she began to serve those who present. My friend, such was and still is the nature of Christ, the effectiveness and competence of his healing. The prophet Jeremiah declares, Heal me, O Lord, that I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you, are my, for you are my praise. This is Jeremiah 17, 14. Psalm 41 advises, The Lord sustained those on their sick beds and ministered them and minister to them in their illnesses. My friends, such is the nature of the healing touch of Christ. Recently, one of our, in one of our songs, it says, when he heals, he heals completely. The scripture relates that at evening, as the sun receded, all who were sick or demon-possessed were brought to Jesus. The scripture tells us that the people of the city gathered around the door and they, and they experienced his power 
of deliverance from a variety of diseases, including demonic possessions. Again, Jesus did not allow the demons to identify him because they were aware of his divinity and that they were, and that they were confronted by the very power of God. But Jesus silenced these demons because the devil must have no say in the agenda of God and the revelation of the Son would be done in their own time. After an eventful night of healing, casting out demons, the restoration of wholeness, Jesus went out early to a deserted area to pray. Here Jesus is demonstrating and guiding us of the importance of prayer in the process of healing. Jesus looked to the Father for the revelation of his, for the rejuvenation of his strength to continue the ministry. Psalm 118 verse 32 declares, it is, God's who, it is God who guides me about with strength and makes my way secure. My friends, those who are in, involved in the ministry of healing are very aware of the draining of energy and the need to fortify oneself by fervent prayer. You see, it is the lifestyle of prayer which sustain the healing and preaching, teaching ministry of our Lord. We are therefore guided to follow where Christ leads. Jesus never lost focus, for in the midst of his hectic schedule, he took time off for private prayer, secluded private prayer. Simon and others had to search to find Christ. Upon locating him, they informed him that the people were searching for him. But Jesus did not return to the city, but took his disciples into the surrounding towns to proclaim the good news there also. He explained that it's for this purpose that he came. Jesus, having moved on to the neighboring towns, he was driven by the divine guidance. He spent the early morning, while it was still dark, in prayer. No doubt seeking to know what the Father, what the Father's will for him will be while in Galilee. He probably saw through the, shallow, the shallowness of the popularity of the people of Capernaum and took the opportunity to teach his disciples by example, not clinging to popularity, but seeking to do the Father's will. His emphasis was on preaching the word while using his healing ministry to bring relief to those suffering, while at the same time bringing effectiveness to the word of God. And so it was that Jesus journeyed short Galilee, proclaiming the good news in the synagogue and, and delivering many from the, the grasp of the demonic powers. The scriptures say that a leper came to him begging and kneeling. We have to note here the earnest desperation and the reverence of the leper. He said to Jesus, if you choose, you can make me clean. This leper made no demands, but submitted himself totally to the will of the master. Additionally, he expressed belief in the confidence in the ability of the Savior to heal him. He did this by his choice of words. He was sure that the Savior could heal him. 
Sometimes, my friends, we fail to receive healing because we do not truly and deeply believe in the granting of what we are asking. But Jesus made it clear on so many occasions that it requires belief in his healing power if healing is to be successful. As the scripture unfolds, it says, Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. He said, I do choose to be made clean. Immediately the le leprosy left him and he was made clean. In this cleansing, Jesus totally disregarded the culture and health issues of the day. Under the law, a person who is touched or touches a leper becomes ceremoniously unclean. The book of Leviticus teaches us, Leviticus 13 and 14 gives us all that we need to know about leprosy in that day. You see, and there was a danger of contamination of the, with the disease. Jesus, however, totally dismissed every ravage, any ravage of sin by dispelling it. Jesus then forbade the leper from publicizing the healing. But the man, however, could not contain himself and publicize the healing anyway to the extent that Jesus could no longer pursue his public ministry in that tongue. Jesus then remained in the country, in the country district where the people came to him from every region. My friends, Jesus did not allow his being unable to preach in the tongue to hinder his work. He simply refocused his ministry and allowed the people to come from wheresoever they, they were to find him. He did not measure his success by popularity but made the very best of every opportunity. It did not matter to Christ if he would if he work for in large crowds in the city, in the neighboring towns, or in the country district. That had it never that did not matter to him where he worked as long as he did the work of the Father. What mattered to him was that he did the work he was sent out to do. And so it must be for those involved in ministry. Placing the focus on the word and not the surroundings is what the ministry is all about. And so as we go out to do the work of God, as we are called to preach, to teach, to enlighten others, we have to adopt the attitude of Christ never being concerned with where we are sent, but more concerned with what we are going to do. If our focus is on crowds and popularity, then we would not accomplish the work which we are sent to do. And our focus must always be on doing the will of the Father which is to proclaim the good news wherever we go. The Lord be with you.
Let us now confess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of your Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. By way of intercession, we continue to pray for the world still battling this pandemic in the hope that the vaccine will take hold and will, the protocols will bring an end to this deaths and suffering worldwide, even in our own country. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide and for the well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the most reverend Justin Welby. We pray that in our province, pray for the Archbishop, the most reverend Howard Gregory. Pray for our own Bishop, Bishop Claude Berkeley, for the retired bishops, Calvin, Roland, Clive. Pray that God will continue to strengthen them as they press forward with his work in this vineyard. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Matthias Church Laventil. Pray for the Reverend Father George Archer and Reverend Beverly Hoyt. We pray for the Anglican Church Men Society throughout the country. In our parish, we pray for our parish priest, Reverend Father Professor Anderson Maxwell, for his assistance, Reverend Titus Akbarali, the deacons, Reverend Finley, Fanfe, and Pontifleck Andre. We pray for the laity also remembering especially our former rector, Canon Jemot Hazelwood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before our Father the five congregations in our parish, at Oropoon, at St. Philip's, the Church of the Transfiguration, St. Aidan's, and St. Mary's, remembering those in those congregations who are sick, praying for the healing hand of Christ to touch them, 
but sincerely that they will use their downtime to focus on the Lord and draw themselves closer to God. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our brothers and sisters abroad in the hope that they will be afforded the opportunity, they will be all be afforded the opportunity to return soon. We pray for those who have passed. May God have mercy on them. We pray especially today for, for our Prime Minister. Pray that the healing hand of Christ will touch him, that he will recover from his illness and continue the good work that he is doing in this country. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue, we continue with the suffrage on page, suffrage C on page 44 of your Book of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our collect is for the first Sunday after Epiphany, the baptism of our Lord, found on page 160. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan Proclaim him your Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized in his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Continue on page 45. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence greet us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good works we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it, may gladly perform it to the honor and the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Prayer of Dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so my brothers and sisters, our service has come to an end. Let us go out and wherever we go, continue to proclaim the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen.